since I've done a video. Um, but hopefully this will be something that you guys enjoy. I had a couple of folks ask about uh, implementing Vuex with Ionic. It's not much different than uh, integrating it with Vue in general, but there's some uh, interesting changes you have to make to get Vue to use the existing API um, and then work with uh, the latest version of Vue. So we're going to walk through a very simple application um, here using Ionic and Vue and hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, please make sure you like and subscribe and let's just walk through the final product. So the final solution that you're trying to build is, well, that we're going to walk through is um, this Ionic application. And what we're going to do is we're going to show a function, a simple counter application to kind of we have a button to increase the value, a button to change the value, um, which is pretty straightforward with Vuex. But then the last thing that we're going to do here is show you how to actually um, pass a value in to modify the current state. So what this does here is it allows you to actually set the default value to state to whatever number you want. So we can say change to 30. You'll update the state to have 30. And then this is just modifying the existing value of the state. So um, that's what we're trying to build. Um, here is um, the Vuex we're going to use. Notice that we're on the uh, label 4.0 RC1. Let's see. Yeah, that's what I built uh, my sample on. So I'm going to stick with that. Um, and to get things started, we're just going to kind of walk through um, what the installation process is here for Vuex um, and how we're going to get our app started. Um, as for our app, we have the basic Ionic application. I've ran the blank template. And then as usual, you know, let's go in and remove this uh, additional header that we have in here. In fact, we can move, remove a lot of this stuff because to get this UI um, that we have here, um, I'm just going to cut and paste a lot of that code over so that we don't spend a lot of time um, uh, walking through that. I will sh explain to you what it all is that I'm doing, but um, let's get the code over there first for the UI so we can hop into the interesting stuff. So um, what we're going to do first is let's go make sure we have everything straight here. Now let's let's uh, let's follow the view instructions here to get our store set up. So um, first thing is we know we need to install the latest release, which is this 4.0RC. So let's um, start by creating a new uh, terminal here and let's load it, make sure we load in the correct version. So let's do this. So let's do an npm install. And get that loaded. And then while that's loading up, let's take a look at what the instructions say here. So it says the installation process has changed. You need to create a store this way. So what we're going to do is we're just going to create a new file down here. A store dot, mm. a store dot ts. And then inside of store dot ts, we're going to kind of follow their pattern to create store. Um, why is that complaining? So what does this little quickly line say? Uh, all right, let me, that's done. Let's kind of restart this. And now we will, let's get that all recompiled. And let's take a look at what we have in our store. Okay. So we have the, all right, so that's cleaned up. We got our store set. Um, our store's gonna be straightforward. We're gonna keep track of account. And um, we have our create store of UX. So that's the first part it says here. Then it says, to install Vuex in a view instance, you need to pass a store into this instead of Vuex. So let's go to our um, main.ts. See, we have all of our Ionic stuff here, but they're saying we need to add this create app. Oh, create app's there, now we need to add the store. So let's just do this. So we import our store and then we, we need to use our Ionic, we need to use all this other stuff, but um, we're just gonna say app use, no, we're gonna just do this. Use store. And we'll get our store in. Okay, see we got any errors, no one's complaining yet. Okay, so that says how you set the store and then we mount the app. All right, but then here's this interesting thing. You need to set the typing for your specific store. And since we're copying what their store is, uh, we can copy that. So first, let's find our view shims. Are they saying, no, they're saying create a new one. So let's uh, create a new file here. And uh, let's copy this name and go back here and create this file. View shims, so now we have our file. Um, 
and paste this in. Store from Vuex, declare our own store state. This is our store state. Um, mm -mm -mm. And that is how we get our shim put in place. Don't know how much longer you're gonna have to be required to do this, but uh, it seems like this is the current state of things. So, so that's kind of what we're gonna go with for now. All right, so we have our state set up. We, have, we followed the directions. So now let's uh, see what we've got going. So now we should have our state in place. And then the other thing, cool thing that you get with the latest version of view is you have a um, hook to get the current store. So if we go to our home view, this is our home view, and if we just drop in right here and say value, and then value, we will, since this is our setup joint down here, so we can go down here, we can say setup. And we know our setup needs to return something. And then we can return the value. And then we can make this computed. And we can return, uh, here we need to do const is store, and then use store. And you see um, use store got imported from UX. This gives us access to our store, so we're gonna say store.state.count. I think that's what we got. Let's see what we get here. Uh, values is count. Let's go look at my store.state.count. Yeah, that's what it should be. All right, so there it is. There's my store. Um, and see if I, so if I change this to 100. See, so now we are getting our store. So that's kind of a first step. But what we want to really be able to do is we want to modif be able to modify um, the values in my state. And the way you modify your values in your state, so I'll put this back. You have, um, you have actions. So let's be honest. And then you have mutations. Um, we are going to assume that you have a basic understanding of how Vuex works. Um, if not, you should, I'll include a link to the um, documentation that kind of explains actions and mutations. Uh, the way that I look at it is, um, so let's do it this way. I'll put my little comments that I was used. So the mutations actually modify the state and the way you can look at it are the actions are asynchronous. So what that means is if you need to do something asynchronous, you perform it inside of the actions and then you call the commit to the mutation, which actually will change the state. So let's put this back to 10, just so we can show that we're getting our states change. We have our actions, we have our mutations. And as I said, we're gonna work under the assumption that you have a basic understanding of how um, Vuex works since the purpose of this really is just to show you how to use it in your application. Um, so we have our numbers, we, we, we have our value, we want to be able to have our value go up and our value go down. So we're going to need two functions to support that, and then we're going to also need um, uh, actions and mutations to support that. So let's start with the buttons first. So, um, like I said, I could, could paste some code, but let's just do just put that in there. So, so now we have our, our two functions. We have a function called go up, which will use our store, which we have here. It'll dispatch an action to go up and dispatch an action to go down. So let's save that and let's go over to our store and let's create our actions. And so our actions are up and down. So let's put those guys in. Uh, so action up. And then out of the context, all right, we want the commit, we want the ability to commit the value. And we're gonna use commit to call a mutation. And then so we just say so commit and we provide the name of the mutation and the mutation we need is up and that's it. And then since down is pretty much the same, but we're just gonna use down, we're just gonna copy this and we're gonna say down, commit down. Let's clean this up a bit. And so now we have our actions. And then for our mutations, it will, they'll be very similar. So we're gonna have our up since that's the name of the mutation that we're working with and then Inside of our mutations, we get access to our state using TypeScript. So we'll just say any for now. And then what we want to say is we want to say, if I'm going to go up, I'm going to take whatever my state is, state.count. 
and then I'm going to increase it. But uh, let's let's just kind of write it all out. So it's clear state dot count plus one. That's where my up and like since they're very similar, we're just going to copy these and we're going to say down state dot down, which is whatever the count is. We're going to minus one. So that's what we got. Oh, what am I complaining about? Try to the space. So I hate this little. Sometimes the yes, length is too much. Uh, I was complaining about there's an extra space. Eesh. Space. Space. Okay. So now let's add some buttons. Well, let's move over some of the style that we were talking about before. So where's that code I already have put together? So as usual, you know, you need to add a boatload of um, Ionic imports. So let's just start with those. So we have our components, and then we are going to have our imports. So let's paste those guys in, and then let's put our uh, UI together properly. So let's get our um, cards. So we're get like I said, we have a card for the top and a card for the bottom. So let's get our first card in. Let's remove this value here. And what is our? What did we say? Our value is coming back in value. So let's go up here and put value in. All right, the uh, app component has not been registered and I have input component. So we're, we're definitely not going to use the app here. Let's remove that. But we're going to use the input later. So let's just comment the input out. And OK, now we see we have our state and we have our up and we have our down. So let's see if we get this going up. So we get our up working and we get our down working. And so this is being done by calling our functions, which are dispatching um, our action, so we have our up, and then we go into our store, it's calling my up, which then does a commit, and the commit actually modifies the state. And then since everything's all reactive, if we go back to my home view, um, the store.state account is updated, it's computed, so value changes, so then my UI changes. So that's what we get. Now the last thing we wanna do is we wanna be able to just go in and reset my count value. So we are going to add another um, action, a mutation. So let's just copy this and modify it. And we're gonna call this one. Let's see, what's the right name? Let's call this change to. So we're gonna call this change to, we're gonna commit, the action will be change to, but what's happened, this is a little bit different because we're gonna take in a payload and inside that payload will be the value um, that we wanna modify our current count to. So let's set payload, and then let's go down here and do our commit. And why didn't this guy get cleaned up when I formatted? There we go. Um, let's copy this. And let's do our change two. And then we have our state coming in, but we have to remember that uh, we are also expecting a payload. So let's set our payload. And for now, since we're doing TypeScript, let's just set it to any, we can clean it up later. And um, what we wanna do is we wanna set the state that count to this payload, payload. And the payload's gonna actually have a value on it. And that value is what we're gonna set our count to. Okay, so we're done inside the store. Uh, let's go back to our home view. And like I said, we're gonna have another card on the bottom and then this card is where we're gonna actually utilize the input. So let's paste over the code for that card. All right, here's our second card coming through. And here's our second card. Okay, now well, we have a couple of errors, but here's that remember, this is the one we're gonna call our change to function on. So we have our change to function. So let's put that in place down here to try to slowly fix some of these errors. Okay. Uh, change two. We want to dispatch a change two, but as part of that, we need our value, right? So um, we're going to use our good buddy um, ref. Um, and so we are going to, we have our new reference. Let's, uh, let's, Import our ref, like we'll use our little helper to kind of add ref to just the import. We're going to set the default value to zero. So that's the initial value. And then we're going to go up here inside our code. So it's got the new value. And then here's our function change to, which we're going to call. Change to does not exist on type. Why does change to not exist on type? Change to is right there. It's being returned. Value is being returned. Let's return our new value. So we have a new value. Let's see what else we're complaining about. Click change to, oh, it's on change to is my function. So on change to, we want to dispatch that action, but we want to pass a payload, and in that payload, our value is 
This guy, new value. Okay, so let's save this guy and let's see what we get. So let's refresh this. We have an evolve value set as 10, but I want to change it to 100. Let's see. Oh, change to, why did not, so my new value is 100. New value, set the value, change to, on change to, store, just come in, change to, commit, payload, payload value. Uh, what did I do? Oh, I know, I'm inside of here, and so here you have to, you have to um, say new value dot value to get the actual value of the ref. So that's the first thing you have to do, and then I'm also realizing that the other thing you have to do is that since my count is a number, I need to change this string value to a number. And so to do that, we're just going to do a parse int, and that will change my new value to a number. Okay, and now let's refresh all this. Let's set this to 67. Oh. Parse int new value value. Um, new value is my reference. I return new value. New value is my model. Let's do a. Oh, is this thing still throwing errors? Nope, it's right. Let's reset. So it's a two. Why is it just setting it to. Oh. All right, let's. This is now where you debug. So let's see. I'm certain it's something silly that I'm doing. But let's drop into my debugger. Oh, it's complaining about a bunch of things. Let's get rid of the complaints. I always like to make sure all the complaints are gone first. Um, so it's complaining card content and card header. Um, page. Uh, I don't have any of the card stuff. Now let's start up at the top here so I can use my IntelliSense to help me out. Oh, got content, card header. Let's take these guys and move them down here. Put my semicolon. Uh, if you guys have been following my videos, I'm certain you've seen that I run into this multiple times where We've got to add all these guys in. Now it needs, needs my ion input. Uh, that's why it wasn't working because it wasn't getting the value from the ion input that I commented out. That is the fundamental problem. So we clean that up. Now let's reload all this guy. All right, what are you complaining about now? Where are oh, right, right here. That in. Then it's expecting one down here. All right, now that looks better. Unless we have our number of components since uh, change two. We change it to nine, we can go down, we can go up, and we can go 10, change two. So there are a couple things that were wrong um, that I got burned on. So let's close this. Let's walk through what were some of the issues that we ran into. So of course we ran into the issue of me not importing the right components, that's one. The second thing we ran into is I did not, because remember when we're inside a setup, we have to get the value of the ref, we can't use the ref. And the other thing was I wasn't parsing the int appropriately. Um, you can see I added the V model, so as I make a change, to my input type, it's updating new value. So I get the right value that I want. And then when I to do my dispatch, because for this one, I'm passing in a payload. For these two, I did not pass in a payload. I go to the store, inside my action, I get my payload, I pass my payload down, and then I get the value property off my payload. And that's what I set the count to. Um, once again, to use this, you need to make sure you use V4, um, RC1, or it might be RC2 by the time you see this. Um, the Let's open this in a new tab. This is a nice description of Vuex, um, which the, talks about the actions, the state, and the views. I highly recommend you take a look at this if you're not familiar with it. But like I said, my assumption is you have a basic understanding of Vuex. You just wanted to see how to implement it in V4. So I hope this video was helpful. Um, please make sure you like and subscribe. I will upload the source code for this also. And thank you. And uh, take care. Bye now.